Nice. Looks like we're gonna pretend the Bard's College is a legitimate faction then. What do I even say about Viarmo? He gives you a single quest. What more do you want from him? He's an outlander. We don't need him. Yeah, okay. Let me put it to you this way. I would rather talk to an Argonian and pretend it's smart enough to understand me than join any organization run by Delphine. Potentially the shittiest person in Skyrim. No exaggeration. I find her anti-dragon views to be incredibly distasteful. Truly that anyone alive today continues to harbor such dogmatic and genocidal ideas is nothing short of astonishing. And she should be ashamed of herself. At least Parthenax can carry a fucking conversation. Whereas Delphine has nothing to offer except shitty vibes and her paranoid creepy uncle. She's just an awful faction leader. On to the next one before I vomit in disgust at her evil presence. She sickens me. Savos Aran. You may think I'm going to go easy on Archmage Savos because he's a Dunmer, and you are correct. It's good to know that at least one faction in Skyrim has the common sense to ensure the superior office is occupied by the superior race. Nevertheless, the College of Winterhold remains a bona fide outlander institution. It is essentially a community college fallback option for mages that are either too inadequate for the Cyrodiilic universities or too racially inferior for House Telvanni. Sayer Joe Savos here falls firmly into the former category rather than the latter. This pillar of foreign-born incompetence probably couldn't even surpass the rank of House Hlalu Retainer back home. And that's saying something, given the clown-ass standards of that not-so-great house before it was dissolved. Savos abandoned his entire frat club in the Labyrinthian to save his own skin when he was a student. And then as Archmage, he entrusted the fate of the entire college with a freshman who only attended a single fucking lecture. This guy is lucky he's a Dunmer, or I'd definitely consider him to be a shitty boss. Next faction leader, please. Ah, yes, Codlack Whitemane. Codlack is the current harbinger of the Companions, which was founded in the Merethic era as a hate group, but somehow morphed into a fellowship of furries. Unfortunately, Codlack suffers from a terrible malady known as being an outlander. And to make matters even worse, he's also a Nord. Codlack is the kind of Enwa boss who will play mind games with you and try to trick you into thinking he's one of the homies. He pretends the office of Harbinger is just a bullshit honorific title and that you're his equal. But if you pay attention closely, you'll notice 100% of the companions practically bend to his will. And frankly, you're not going to get anywhere in your furry career without serving as his loyal bitch for an unspecified period of time. Oh yeah, he's a werewolf too. This faction is really just a gross mess. Honestly, don't work for this guy. He's kind of a subtle asshole. A real wolf in wolf's clothing, but with the addition of a kind grandpa mask to hide the double layers of wolfishness. All right, I don't even know what I'm on about now. Let's move to the next faction leader. Come on, do I really got to do this one? All right, whatever. Here's Astrid, leader of everyone's favorite Tamrielic kill cult. Astrid has ego problems, to say the least. She's been a real see you next tier does ever since she was appointed CEO of Murder Incorporated, and she'll sacrifice anything to maintain her place at the top of the hierarchy. Yep, you guessed it. Outlander. And a Nordic one at that. Reason has never been much of a strong suit for these ice people, and Astrid is living proof of that incontrovertible truth. Be sure to get your hands on a Daedric Quirass ASAP, because this chick is fixing to plant a poison dagger in your back the second you turn away. Absolutely garbage leader. Next faction boss, please and thank you. Sure, fine. Let's be cute and pretend the Forsworn count as a faction. The Reachmen and the Bard's College should be paying me for the free advertising I've been giving their useless asses. Here's Madanok, aptly named King in Rags, the wannabe Geronimo of the Forsworn. Madanok is a fucking loon and you must always remember to kill him in the No One Escapes Sidna Mine quest. I'm tired of his people killing animals and using their body parts to make tacky Halloween decorations. It's not scary. It's just yucky, and it's a waste of resources that would never fly in the Ashlands. I'm serious. I'm sick of this shit. Every time you enter a Forsworn dungeon, you see two or three blood-soaked goat heads impaled on stakes just outside the doors. What purpose does that serve, Madanak, other than to make your cause less sympathetic to mentally stable onlookers? It needs to fucking stop, God's damned Enwa Switz, Mercer Frey.
We have here yet another tragic instance of outlander leadership. But hey, look, a relevant Breton character who isn't one of those goat-murdering savages in the Reach. That's nice. Anyway, this money-grubbing jerk-off has been thieving from the thieves for years now, but I'm not gonna lie. Given the ineptitude of this poor excuse for a Nordic Mafia, I'd probably hate him even more if he didn't steal from these pea-brained fools. Do these fucking idiots just take the Guildmaster's word for it that the treasury is full? Imagine a bank manager robbing his bank and none of the employees even noticing for years. I'm not kidding, that's actually what happened here. I don't even know what else to say. Next faction leader, please, before my brain falls out of my fucking mask. Oh, hell, we're getting political now. Do you guys remember those proof things you had to do as kids in math class? Let's do one for General Tullius. Imperials run the Empire. The Empire is run by mongrel dogs. The Imperials are mongrel dogs. General Tullius is an Imperial. Therefore, General Tullius is a mongrel dog of the Empire. And your boy, Daddy Dagoth, don't get down with mongrel dogs of the Empire, does he? No, he sure fucking does not, next faction leader, right fucking now, please. Gods, first Tullius, now this guy. All right, fine, let's get down to Dwemer Tax and list the key leadership flaws of Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak. Number one, he is an outlander. Number two, he is a Nordic outlander. Number three, he is, at the very least, ambivalent toward the bigotry displayed by the Nords of Windhelm against their downtrodden Dunmer neighbors. Ooh, that's a big no-no there, Ulfric, you fascist piece of n shit. Definitely gonna count against you when I judge how good of a faction leader you are. Number four, he was dumb enough to be outsmarted and caught in a trap by the Imperials, and he was only saved by literal divine intervention in the form of Alduin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's four major flaws too many, Ulfric. I'm gonna go ahead and call you a shit faction leader. Hopefully you and Tullius die equally horrific deaths and have your souls trapped in black soul gems so you cannot meet your degenerate loved ones in the afterlife. Let's move on. Isran of the Dawn Guard. Isran thinks he's hot shit because he's a red guard and apparently red guards are good swordsmen. Unfortunately, he has yet to come to the realization that red guards are just as outlander as the rest of the outlanders, and therefore he lacks the predisposition for leadership that all Dunmer except Savos Aaron are born with. Sorry, Isran, gonna have to go fuck yourself on this one buddy moving on to the next faction leader. Lord Harkin's lucky half the fanbase has a fetish for his daughter because he's an absolute cunt on an interpersonal level. He's also an outlander, and his plan to extinguish the sun would inadvertently destroy all organic life on Nern. But his vampire lord form does give him a grayish skin tone that vaguely reminds me of the Dunmer, so I will give credit where credit is due. Overall, however, very shitty leader. That whole top-down, my way, or the Silt Strider way philosophy of leadership won't get you anywhere, folks. So shall we move on? Indeed. Indeed we shall. Matriarch Drevlin. Matriarch Drevlin is the heretical High Priestess of the Creation Club's Tribunal Temple Revivalists. Normally I'd only discuss Vanilla Edition faction leaders, but I'm not mature enough to pass up fruit hanging this low. Drevlin is a Dunmer, so that's a plus. However, her personality is largely defined by the handful of generic NPC comments she's able to pull out of her butt crack. So being the gentlemanly god that I am, I will attack the fuckheads she worships instead of defaming her character any further. I mean, she's already a leader of the Tribunal Temple, folks. That's pathetic enough as it is. Let's have a go at Alm CV in order, starting with this mental case, Alm Alexia, the Alm of Alm CV. A true Queen Biatch and gold digger who stole my man Nerevar back when he and I were going steady in the First Era, a crime for which she will never be forgiven. Lexi did what she could to disguise her malignant narcissism with a stripper costume, but I always saw right through her chimer tits and tassels. Once she puts on that freaky war mask, you know her inner beast is unleashed, and she's out for blood. This unhinged maniac 187'd her husband and then tried to do the same to his reincarnation. She also iced this know-it-all Sotha Sill and left his corpse hanging from a bunch of wires in the clockwork city. Look, I'm not about to pretend I don't find a false god's death to be hilarious. This wannabe Dwemer clown had it coming. I even thought he was kind of a douche back in our Keimer days. He was the kind of guy who, when asked how his day was going, would give some sort of pretentious response like, well, 
It would depend on what you mean by day. Like, okay, Sotha, you fucking penis. We get it, you're an intellectual. No need to wave your Sigic Order degree all over the place. Trust me, we believe you when you say you went to college. And speaking of pretentiousness, let's discuss our favorite thong-wearing, dissociative personality disorder-suffering false god Vivek. Vivek is so dead set on convincing you of his very mysterious and complex character that he literally drew a straight line down his body and painted each side a different color. Ah, yes, Vivek, so interesting, so metaphorical. Apparently, Vivek is also a hermaphrodite, which, while admittedly quite arousing, does not excuse the utterly ostentatious nature of his poetry and scriptural writings. I cannot imagine how difficult it was to get through tribunal seminary. I'm surprised all the priests' and priestesses' eyes haven't rolled out of their heads.